Wabbits. Bunny wabbits like to eat vegetables. <laughs> Are you ready? I don't know if I am or not. Oh my gosh, you're going right through the, what used to be the... Barn lot. Yeah, you, I thought we went down the other way. This is the easy way to get to this buckwood pot. I see. How close are the bees to the buckwheat? Uh, maybe a quarter mile. Oh, really? Oh, so they're not close. Oh, that is close. Oh, it is? The bees will fly up to, uh, they'll cover a two mile radius pretty well. In desert areas, they're known to fly up to six miles to find resources. Wow. I think I have been down here. This looks familiar. Is this how we went before to go to the river? Many years ago. Well, yeah, everything was many years ago. <laughs> so this is my nephew, Nathan. Hi, Nathan. Hi. <laughs> He's, oh, he has driven us to the buckwheat field. Wow, look at that. And why, why did you say we don't have to worry about snakes? That stuff is waist high. Um, because I'm not worried about snakes. Okay. Are you armed or something? <laughs> no. The, the, the two most common snakes around here are the uh, North American racer, which is, I think, Latin name Colubra constrictor, and the gray rat snake, which is a Pantherophis spiloides or something like that. Anyway, they're both harmless constrictors. So... Um, we don't, we do have the odd, very rare, uh, timber rattlesnake, but they don't live in this type of habitat and copperheads. And they also don't live in this type of habitat. Okay. So, uh, the copperheads prefer wooded areas. Uh, the, the timber rattlesnakes prefer south facing slopes with mix of timber and some rock outcrop. And that's just not what we've got here. This is a field. It's a field. We're just going to be standing yeah. in a field. Yeah, so you may see a rat snake or a, or a black racer, but that's about it. And is, since you called it a, a, a rat snake, a constrictor, is that how? Because I understand they kill, mm -hmm. um, they kill poisonous snakes. No, rat snakes do not. They don't eat other snakes, but um, black racers or North American racers will eat other snakes. They're not really big enough to eat... Um, a bigger timber rattlesnake, mm -hmm. but they will eat copperheads. Uh, the eastern king snake is the the one in this in this part of the world that um, preys very heavily on other snakes. So, other poisonous snakes. Yeah, other, and we've got some of those, but not a ton. Not mm -hmm. a ton. Wow. Okay. Well, hi. This is Nathan, and he <laughs> has started a new company called Duck River Honey, mm -hmm. and he is taking me on a field trip today. This is very exciting. So let's go. Wow. This is amazing.
Oh, a honeybee. It's so rare to see one for me. Hi, friend. Hey, everybody. I am in the country in Tennessee and I am with my nephew today on a field trip. This is so exciting. It's my first field trip to a beehive. A bee, it's not just apiary. a beehive, it's a what? Apiary. An apiary, see, first one. And he, we're gonna get suited up and do all of that. And I'm going to shoot an interview with my nephew who has started a channel and he's already got a whole bunch of subscribers after just a few months. This is Nathan, and he is so much better at all of this filmmaking than I have ever been, and he's only been doing it for a few months. So I am very excited today to be able to bring you his new honey company called Duck River Honey. Make sure and check him out on Facebook and and wait for the video, which he is going to edit because he is even better than me and he's only been doing it. He started a channel to learn how to, well, you tell him. Yeah, what, I started a channel to learn how to do video and editing and then it started becoming more of a thing, so. Yeah, but you already had the bee operation going, right? I had that going, yeah, and um, beekeeping's really hard starting out. There's just a lot to know. They're, they're just a different creature. And I feel like a lot of new beekeepers start out and then hit some failure and get discouraged and quit. So uh, my real goal in my channel is to encourage new beekeepers and help them to be successful so that they'll have fun, fall in love with it, and um, help the bees. And did you fall in love with it? Oh, I, I absolutely love it. I grew up on a farm, of course, and we had cattle and stuff, but I've had exposure to a lot of different avenues of agriculture, and beekeeping is by far my favorite. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, well, I know you, you showed cattle in, in the fair and all of that stuff, right? Yeah, I did. I showed cattle in 4-H for 15 years, 16 years, yeah. something like that. And then they were sold at auction, or yeah. is that how it worked? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so you had the whole country experience, and then you came back here. Yeah, I was fortunate to move back. Um, moved my wife back in 2012. I think so when we moved back here. Right. Where were you before? Uh, we were in Chattanooga, and then I was in Kentucky for a while, and Knoxville for years. Um, so I've been, I've been all over. Not as much as you. <laughs> well, you're not as old as me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in my last video, I showed planting this buckwheat all the way through bloom and some of the pollinators that are in it. So I brought her down to see this. She wanted to see that especially. And then after this, we're going to go out to my bee yard and go through a nucleus colony, show her all about bees and how fascinating and amazing they are. Um, it'll be a new experience for her, so I'm, I'm excited. I love showing people uh, who've never been in a beehive just how intricate and amazing it is. So I'm looking forward to today and I hope that she has a good time here. Can you access the river from this field? Does it um, drop yeah, right, right down here. Right, you can, oh, yeah. Yeah. We went over here in the, I think it was the late 1990s, maybe 1999, something like that. Oh, wait, maybe it was the early 2000s. At any rate, I took a photograph because I used to shoot everything on a, um, a Roloflex that was 1953 film camera, obviously. <laughs> and Nathan took me down to the river and I shot, if you've, if you've seen my videos to the very end, I have a promo that says Duck River Productions, and there is a black and white shot of the river, and we animated, that's very rough animation, we did this animation in 2012, so forgive me, but we had a duck, wood duck, mm -hmm. which um, uh, Nathan told me was the right kind of duck that would be on mm -hmm. Duck River, and my sound editor got the actual quack of a wood duck and we put all that in for my little few seconds uh logo at the end of all of my videos and that shot was taken right down here by the river by duck river and i grew up near duck river so that's why my company has always been called duck river productions and that's why his company is called duck river honey, duck honey yeah. <laughs> well let's go see the beehives i'm so excited i've never been in a bee suit so I'm going to look like 
a big, big snowman. <laughs> yeah, you will. <laughs> this is what? I'm not sure what he is. Mm, come back, come back. Come here. Look at those, that blue. Wow. That's super iridescent. They really flutter a lot. Mm hmm Gorgeous orange spots. What's that one on? Wow. Turn around, turn around. Oh, there's two of them. Are they different? Well, this one that we've been watching, I've never seen one with that much blue. That beautiful iridescent blue. Mm -hmm. Usually a stripe like this one. Oh, it's an older one because... Yeah, it's had a bird strike. The back wing is torn off the bottom of it. That's a silver spotted skipper. Where did it go? That's that little butterfly that just took off. Oh, okay. It's amazing how many species of bees in here. I used to have these in California. Buckwheat only produces nectar in the morning. Oh, that's why they're all here. Yep. Hey everybody, we are at the hives and I am going to get into a bee suit for the first time in my life. And I go like this, right? You're not wearing pants? I'm wearing pants. I mean, bee pants? I don't, I don't, do I bee, take, do I take I don't my, bee keep naked. Do I be, <laughs> do I take my boots off? Do I put my boots down through this leg? Yeah, you can get your boots down through there. Oh, okay. That would make for an, a, an interesting holiday. Like they have <laughs> the National Naked Gardening Day or whatever. I know they do. It's it's kind of crazy. We should okay. have National Naked Beekeeping Day. Yeah. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I think that would result in a lot of stings. Oh, I see. It's unzipped at the bottom. This is going to be attractive. I think this is going to be very attractive on me. I can see how you could get warm in this, though. Yes, we'll get warm. Well, I think I'm going to have to give up on this one. Okay. Because I did not bring mine. Okay. <laughs> card? No, not the card. I didn't bring the um, adapter to put it on the... Uh, do I have that? I don't know if you have one of these or not. Okay, so folks, what's happening here today, and you're going to be seeing this on my channel, is... Nathan is shooting a video as well as me shooting this video and you're going to be getting you're going to get to see that as well so we're hooking all of this stuff up now what do I do do I zip this I zip everything I guess yep Can you give me a mic check mic 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 there you check, go. mic check. Okay. Looks fantastic. It should pick up over there. Alrighty. I gotta get the smoker lit. Okay. How do I look? <laughs> Tell me about the smoke again. We were just talking about the smoke and some beekeepers feel, some purists feel that smoke is, um, not good well, and you were you were telling me why you think it is good i think smoke's good for the bees and good for the beekeeper it uh, disrupts the alarm pheromone that just permeates the hive um, and helps to keep the bees calm and mm -hmm. i think it is 
it makes inspections easier on the bees. Like there's no lasting stress mm -hmm. uh, left from me going into the hives. Mm -hmm. there, there may be some, but it's not as much as if I was not using smoke. Yeah. So uh, just uh, for the audience, tell them what we're about to do. We're gonna do a nuke inspection. We're gonna go through a nucleus colony, look for just health and girth and robustness and vigor and all that stuff. Diagnose any problems if there are any. Uh, just see what's going on in there. Okay, and you've got how many hives and how many in production? Um, depending on how many have queens, I've got somewhere between 20 and 23 or four right now. Okay, and there they are. How long did it take you to set all that up? I'm in my second year. Okay. Did you produce honey last year in your first year? I had, a, I sold about 80, 80 to 85 pounds of honey. And then this year I was able to harvest about 750. And next year, depending on weather and how things go, I could double that. Wow. All right, so, let's go inspect. All right. Is there anything that I need to know in terms of doing anything? Just move slow. Okay. And? Don't make loud noises. Okay. I uh, hope you're not wearing perfume that smells like bananas. No, I've just got that pyrethrin or whatever. <laughs> Permethrin's fine. <laughs> okay. There are some ticks around the hives. So. Just uh, be calm. Okay, I will. But you've got a really good bee suit. Um, yeah. That's an ultra breeze. I've never been stung through one. I get stung through my gloves sometimes, but I don't get stung through the through that suit. So far, it's going well. He's not seeing any problems, but I had to come and get a drink of water. It's hot, and this thing is hot, and I'm dripping with sweat under here. So, I didn't want to just, in fact, I'm going to have another sip. I don't want to just faint or something and cause a problem. And that is electrolyte water for all of you who are concerned about me. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm going to go back at it. Let me just give you a look over here so you can see what we're doing. Nathan found some baby bees being born, and you'll be able to see all of that intricate detail and everything from his video, so you'll have to watch that. You got one headhunter bee chasing me. Uh-huh. Don't take your veil off yet. Oh, I, okay. It's not off, but I did take a drink. Okay, so here's the update. The hive looked great, and you're gonna see all about that in Nathan's video. And we're going to go over and see an even bigger hive. As soon as this bee is no longer after us, we're going to take our hoods off and hop in the car. I would say that we are about average this year, but this is, I think, the year of brood 19, which is one of the largest broods, brood emergences. But um, I think it's more east and north. The, and last, the, the last year that we had a really big emergence was 2010. Because that was the year I planted all of my fruit trees, not knowing that we were going to have a huge cicada problem. And of course, they. Uh huh. Hunter bee. Uh huh. She followed me over here. Yeah. I was just asking Nathan about the cicadas because they seem so loud, but he was saying that they're kind of normal. This year and yeah they're, they're pretty normal this year the last big year was 2010 that was the same year i planted my fruit trees and of course they decimate on fruit tree young fruit trees so oh. i got a lot of damage on my fruit trees and i've had cicadas uh living on the root system of these trees ever since and oh I, no i don't i forget if they were a 13 year or a 17 year cicada but uh -huh. we'll see them come out one of these days hopefully i'm around for that So we're at the next location, which you can see the hives over right there. And as soon as we got out, Nathan said that the headhunter smelled him and, and was already coming over. And you were telling me that 
I said, they must have really good sense of smell. And what did you say? They've got a sense of smell many, many times better than a bloodhound. A bloodhound dog. Yeah. That's incredible. Yep. And they have memories. Guard duty is one of the last things a bee does in their life. They, they get crankier the older they get. Mm -hmm. And uh, so a, a bee this time of year may only let, live for six weeks. Oh. And maybe the last couple of weeks will be guard duty. Oh. And uh, they remember me. They remember my smell. So I, I did something to one of these hives yesterday that made them mad. Mm. And she remembers me now. So for the next two weeks, that hive is not going to like me. And uh -huh. then after that two weeks, if I'm not out here, they completely forget about me. Well, so, she's going to go and yeah, it'll be a new she'll one. Yeah, she'll die within a couple of weeks and then she, you know, the yeah. hive loses its memory of, of me. Oh, okay. When those guard bees die. Okay, so what are we going to do here? We're going to check strength on one or two of these and maybe throw some honey supers. Cool. What's throw a super mean? Add a super. Add a honey super to, add a box. Okay, I just want to show you this pretty place. Isn't this an amazing place? This is in the country, okay? And look at these beautiful blue flowers. Which kind of butterfly is this? Like that other one you said the... Um... Easter, it's either an Eastern or Red Admiral. Um, that's probably a spice bush swallowtail there. That's what it, look, yep. and it looks that like. That looks like it is on some sweet clover. And these blue flowers are? White mouth day flower. White mouth. Do they have a white mouth? It looks yellow. Do the bees really like them? The bumblebees use them a lot. The honeybees will some, uh, just when there's not much else to work. What kind of honey am I getting? Uh, it, it's a spring wildflower. It'll have a lot of tulip poplar, a little bit of black locust, some white clover, some a little bit of sweet clover, some apple, some pear, some plum. <laughs> you got it all. A lot of lot of very diverse pollens. It'll have some basswood, probably a little bit of sourwood in it. And it got all of that from around here. Yep. Wow. With those the, with the river running through here, we have. Uh, incredibly diverse habitat types. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have river banks and river bottoms and mm -hmm. then river bluffs that are very steep and rocky and mm -hmm. hilltops and hollows and fields and pastures and, and wooded areas. Mm -hmm. uh, so we just have a tremendous amount of diversity. This part of Tennessee, we have 43 minor nectar flows and seven major nectar flows that are capable of producing a honey crop. Wow. So there's just a lot of pollen, a lot of life. It is one of the most biodiverse river ecosystems in the world, mm -hmm. believe it or not. Um, your brother Bill can tell you a lot more about that than I can. There's a tremendous amount of freshwater mussels. Uh, there may be some species that are only found in the Duck River. It's a, a long river. It's not real big, but it's just beautiful. It turns this emerald green color in the summer. Um, it floods heavily and will turn all the river bottoms into a lake in spring. Wow. Um, it's still pretty wild, pretty untamed, and just gorgeous. I think it's one of the top scenic rivers in the country. Yeah, it's beautiful. Wow. It really is beautiful. Well, I better get my glove on because there's a lot of bees flying around me. Yeah, this one right here wants to sting me in the face. Okay, everybody, we have done the hive inspection and I had a great time. This was a great experience for me. I've never been really around bees at all. And uh, I want to thank Nathan and I can't wait for you to see his video. He's going to do a really fantastic video with all his <laughs> cameras and editing and everything. Don't, and... don't oversell it. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll see, well, it's, it's, a it's a lot of technical stuff, right? So I'm but learning. It, I'm, but... I'm learning a lot. Well, I mean, the technical side of beekeeping is kind of what we covered, right? Yeah, yeah in your video. And um, so thanks so much for following uh, my channel. I really appreciate it. And please go over and check out Nathan's channel called Duck River Honey on YouTube. And his website also, same thing? Or? Yeah, duckriverhoney.com. Dot com. And hey, maybe even get some honey from him. He's, he's got a Facebook page. And um, certainly if you're local... Somebody could come and buy honey from you, right? Yeah. Okay, super. Well, thanks so much, everybody. We'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>
All right, let's go. <laughs> well, that was really interesting. I'm glad I had the uh, chance to experience these close up and get some great information. I hope that was enlightening to you as well. I, at least his video will be. So thanks again. If you enjoyed this video, please watch these. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And I'll see you in the next video.